Tri Valley, California presents Chef's Corner. My name is Alex. I uh, work both at Poly Event Center and Costa Rail here at Ruby Hill Winery. Uh, one of our polenta, which uh, we've both become quite known for in the area with our guests, is uh, we prefer to cook with at a four to one milk or a liquid to dry ratio. And so some of the herbs that John spoke of earlier, we muddle into the hot liquid so that you extract as much flavor as you possibly can out of there. And uh, I'll muddle it for a little bit, but usually if you let it sit for a while, it'll actually turn green, like a faint green color. Huh. And what you get when you're done with the puenta is, you know, it's nice and creamy and everything, but it has a very strong herb flavor. And again, I was talking about the ratio. We do a four to one ratio, and that gives you a little bit firmer texture. It's four parts milk to one part dry polenta. And the, we use a medium brine polenta because after constant stirring, it still has a little bit of texture. If you use anything finer, it'll just turn, you know, just like using cornmeal, anything thicker, and it's still too crunchy. So I'm muddling this in here. What were the herbs that you put in? Uh, there was uh, fresh oregano, rosemary, and thyme. I'm going to strain the whole herbs out of the milk here. Oh, that's really cool. You want to be careful not to uh, burn the milk. It's uh, something that people do a lot. Uh, it's, it's not a fast thing to do. It's a slow process. Right. Steaming like this is around 170, 180 degrees. Okay. It's a good temperature. Um, don't let the milk stick to the bottom and steep it for a long time. I would say, personally, when I do this, if the milk gets a green tint to it, you've got the flavor out of the earth. That's okay. usually how I visually see when it's done. All right. We're going to finish the polenta. Now we're going to finish the polenta. So the whole herbs have been straight out. The milk is nice and hot, as you can see. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, you have to stir this stuff constantly over you know, medium heat. And straight constantly, it's not going to allow the polenta or the milk to burn. Constant stirring allows the, the uh, grains of polenta to bloom properly. If you don't have enough liquid in there, like if you did a smaller ratio, like three to one or like two to one, it's, it's going to come out so firm and uncooked that it's just not desirable. That's okay. Um, so this is going to take four a little while. Four to one. Four to one. That's the magic number. That is the magic number. <laughs> and uh, we do a lot of tastings. Yeah. We've done a lot of wine dinners uh -huh. with Ruby Hill Winery. So this is some. This is a dish that we have on some of our menus, but also we've done for uh, some of the wines that or the wine dinners that we paired with Chris Gray's wines over at Ruby Hill Winery. Got so, it. We right. try to run the whole gamut here. So like say you could have your wedding here, you could have the short ribs, and then for your first anniversary you can make it as a, as a, as a to, uh, surprise for your husband. Or, or wife. a surprise for your wife. Exactly. I can tell the see by the bubbles on the side the stuff is starting to thicken up. Uh -huh. And we do have some that's almost finished, so we're we'll not gonna finish actually finish this one, but it's starting to thicken up pretty quickly here. Yeah. A little bit of salt and white pepper. And as, and as John mentioned, when he was seasoning the short ribs, seasoning properly is of utmost importance because you can have the greatest ingredients in the world, but if they're not seasoned properly, it's just not going to taste good. Right. So I've just, just been stirring this for a couple minutes wow, and it came together pretty quick. Together, yeah. So we're going to set this one aside. That's a large mascarpone. Mascarpone cheese. Cheese makes everything better. Yes, it does. And butter, too. And butter. Butter makes everything better. <laughs> Forget those New Year's resolutions. <laughs> when I was in uh, culinary school, our uh, our motto was fat is flavor. So add as much fat to everything fat as you can. Fat is flavor. I like it. And I am relatively thin, but... <laughs> so sure work make... out, go for a run, and then work hard, have a really, really good meal. And it's all in moderation, right? That, that's right. So you can see the noticeable change in texture with the added fat in here. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, as I just mentioned, with polenta in these cold winter months that we're having, nothing is better than this stuff on a cold winter's night. I want to plate this up real quick. Uh, we've got these really nice oversized plates, which I like to use. It emphasizes the food. It's white, so you, you don't notice the plate as much as you do the food. Mm -hmm. 
we've added some uh, fresh fresh herbs to this polenta. It's really nice. It's a perfect consistency for this as well. Really good. Wow. Oh, baby, look at that. <laughs> That's a healthy so lunch. Good. I know. <laughs> nice and light. Marge? I would have to go to the gym tonight. <laughs> wow, he did it. I did it. Did you believe that? Okay, so John has the polenta, and again, the ratio, the four to one ratio, this is nice for the shorter, shorter but otherwise it would spread off the plate. Uh -huh. And so for a garnish, which is also the vegetable, it has some shaved fennel bulbs, which uh, John talked about putting the radishes in ice water, it makes it curly and crispy. There's some scallions, uh, some long chives cut in here, throw in some of the pickled shallots that we made before, and my lemon. Zest that right on here. We're just gonna zest right on the top to get some really it's kinda like light, a, uh, bright. Gremolata without the, uh, the rest of it, just mm -hmm. straight lemon zest. And then we have some Banyol's vinegar, which is a French red wine vinegar. It's very light, very flavorful. It's not gonna overpower anything you do, so just a little bit of that. And then same, some local uh, extra virgin olive oil. I like to use unfiltered organic olive oils for finishing. <laughs> it's good. And then just toss the stuff nicely, and there's your garnish. Wow. We made a little bit of uh, paprika oil. Paprika oil? Yeah. It's uh, really simple. It's just paprika and oil that have been slowly, carefully heated up. Fantastic. And uh, there you have That's it. That's it. That's the uh, wine brie short rib with uh, creamy mascarpone polenta and a uh, uh, red wine jus with a fennel garnish. Our Foley Event Center is located at 410 Vineyard Avenue and Costa Real at Ruby Hill Winery. We are located at 410 Vineyard Avenue. Uh, that is Vineyard Avenue right next to Highway 84. At www.costarealevents.com and also www.homeeventcenter.com. Uh, at Costa Real here, we have uh, a large ballroom, the Grand, the Grand Ballroom, the Grand Ballroom, where we can see up to 550 guests, where we do uh, corporate events, lots of weddings, any special events you can possibly think of, we've, we've probably done it here or at the Palm. Uh, it is a, this, the, the property is designed after a Mediterranean villa where uh, Green, Phillips, and Russ, and George love traveling and research to uh, design the place. And it's absolutely beautiful with views of the mountains out here in the Clearmore Valley. We also have an uh, amber room. And we that. have an amber room, which uh, we do smaller parties and some and wedding ceremonies are held in there. It's got a fireplace in it. Really, uh, <laughs> really big fireplace. Like you could fit like 10 bodies in here. Whoa. Wow. That's a big fireplace. For more information on the restaurants featured in this month's edition of Chef's Corner, go to www.ourrootsareshowing.com.